right now. It may be a Christmas miracle. A big rig flew off I-35 on the northeast side in the middle of morning traffic and somehow no one was hurt. Yeah, the scene near I-35 and Wiener created quite a mess, especially on the access road. As Katrina Weber reports, it also created a spectacle for passing drivers. This is either the worst day or the best day of an Amazon truck driver's life. He told police someone cut him off on Interstate 35 near Wiener around 6.30 this morning, causing his 18-wheeler to skid off the highway. The cab of the truck crash landed along the access road below, while the back end dangled above it. The truck driver later walked around amid the mess, seemingly wondering what to do next. So I'm trying to get to Fort Sam to get to work this morning. James Skinner, like a lot of other commuters, also was left wondering, mainly how to navigate the traffic tie-up. In the meantime, many of them made the most of it. I'm just a picture taker. Really, I want to show it to my wife. She's out of town right now. We just got stuck, and I saw that crazy accident on the side of the highway. I had to stop and check. Gregory Vargas, who owns a trucking company himself, felt sympathy for the driver, but also was stunned by what he saw, a sight made for a selfie. And I just... I just know this will make my YouTube channel blow up, you know what I mean? This is definitely an unbelievable sight, something you don't see every day. But what may come as even more of a surprise is that the driver of this truck wasn't hurt at all. He lived to tell the story that so many other people shared on social media. And it has more than one silver lining. No injuries and no holiday packages lost. Police say the trailer of the Amazon truck was empty. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Definitely a crazy sight to see. But what started off as a slow day on the San Antonio roadways sped up fast. Yeah, that's right, as Stephen Cavazos joins us. So, Stephen, how do the roadways look out there now? Well, you know, uh, we did have a very quiet start to the morning. It was a gift that we really enjoyed, but uh, obviously not looking jolly right now. Take a look. 35 at Weedner is a shot. As of right now, we're not seeing that, uh, so that truck trailer that we were just seeing from Katrina's story. It looks like they've cleared that out, so that's some good news. And based on what we're looking at from this trans guide shot, traffic is moving through those frontage road lanes pretty easily, uh, but we still have some lanes closed off there off 35 at Weedner, but traffic still slowing down. We're still seeing an impact. Uh, let's go ahead and take you to the map and see what that's looking like right now, especially if you have to head out maybe in the next few moments coming into San Antonio from 35 because it's not going to look too great. Let me jump right over here. Uh, you see right now the southbound lanes are impacted of uh, 35 and right now traffic moving at just 10 miles per hour. We got a lot of red on the screen and it's not what we'd like to see this more or this late in the day, especially for people that will be traveling. Let's take a wider look because that traffic is backed up about six miles past the forum in Live Oak. So again, we are seeing the residual effects because of that crash. Even though it looks like we're seeing some progress, we're still seeing some slowdown. So that's not a good sign. Uh, just a quick update here. If you can take you to the wider look at the map, you still we have some slowdowns there of 1604 as well as 410. But the big issue is going to be right there on 35 where we did have that crash early this morning. Been there for quite a while, but let me go ahead and do some jumping here because the system's acting a little funky. Uh, let's jump right over here to this information. So this is important. I-35 South and at Weedner Road. We know the right lane uh, is open on the frontage road. The left lane was closed at the moment, but that needs to be updated. We have seen those left lanes open. However, two lanes on the highway still remain closed at this time. Important to note they haven't closed off the highway, but we're going to continue to monitor the situation. So stay with us here on air and online at KSAT.com. Max Jaffney. Thank you, Stephen. New at noon, a terrifying house fire on the city's east side. San Antonio Fire Department officials tell us it was actually a space heater that was to blame for all the flames. So take a look. This was the situation in the 400 block of Nopal Street around 8 a.m., not too far from south through Braunfels and I-10. Thankfully, no injuries reported. The flames did not spread either. However, fire crews say that inside that room there were a number of solvents and magnesium engine block. That was actually fueling the fire. All this serving as a reminder to people this holiday season, keep safety and fire hazards in mind. My biggest concern coming into the holidays is always fireworks. Um, again, keep your Christmas trees watered if you have a, a, you know, a real tree. Keep it watered, unplug it at night, things like that. You know, keep heat sources, no candles near Christmas trees. And other than that, please be safe with fireworks. There were two dogs in the backyard at the time of the fire but both are okay. 
That's some devastating news that's still shaking the city of San Antonio. This noon, the search continues for missing three-year-old Lena Kill, and the Muslim community of San Antonio wants to help. The Islamic Center of San Antonio is offering a $75,000 reward for any information that leads officials to the little girl. Her mother reported her missing on Monday evening at the Villas del Cabo complex in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. Lena was wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes when she disappeared. Police believe the girl could be in danger. Anyone with any information about her disappearance is asked to call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. And in Medina County, a reward is also being offered amid the search for the three children in that community. They are believed to be with their father, Jonathan Wright, who has several out-of-state warrants for his arrest. Those warrants are tied to alleged sex crimes against minors. The children were last seen Monday with their dad near Settle Settlers Pass. That's a neighborhood in Rio Medina outside of Castroville. Now, if you have any information about that, you can reach the Medina County Dispatch Office at 830-741-6153. New details this noon in that deadly crash investigation on the city's north side. Police now say a deer crossing the road actually led to a woman veer into a tree. So this was a situation. Police say this all happened around 2.30 this morning on Jones Maltzberger and Carlton Oaks. Officers on the scene telling us a driver in a Honda Accord was headed north when she hit a deer, crossed over the southbound lanes, and then crashed into a tree. She was pronounced dead on the scene. Police say the driver was not wearing a seatbelt. Police are still trying to track down those responsible after two teens were held up and one was shot on the west side. Officers say just before one this morning, the teens were walking in the 300 block of Valley High Drive. That's not far from Highway 90 and Loop 410. Police tell us that the police or a driver pulled up to them. Then someone got out of that car and demanded the teens hand over their belongings. Officers say the suspects took a gold chain, a bracelet and a phone from them. One one of them tried to fight back, pushing the suspect, according to officers. And that's when police say the suspect pulled out a gun and shot the victim in the leg. The suspect took off. So far, police have not made any arrests. Now to the latest in the fight against the pandemic. New developments in the pandemic. The FDA approving a second COVID-19 treatment pill, and this coming just one day after issuing emergency use authorization to Pfizer's treatment. The move coming as millions of Americans travel ahead of this holiday weekend. ABC's Monaco Sarabdi reports from New York. As the holiday travel rush ramps up ahead of Christmas, officials are increasing efforts to combat the surge in COVID-19 infections. This virus is going vertical. It's going straight up. Today is expected to be the busiest day on roads and airports across the country. But officials are pointing to early signs that Omicron could be less severe than previous variants, though it's too soon to know for sure. According to some forecast models used by the CDC, cases fueled by Omicron may not peak in the U.S. until early January 2022. But in South Africa, where the virus was first detected, new reports show infections are rapidly dropping. This is really great news to hear that um, the cases have peaked in South Africa, um, which means that there are less number of deaths and hospitalization. Adding to hopes, the FDA has given the green light to two new COVID-19 treatment pills. As quickly as Pfizer gets the pills manufactured and delivered, we will immediately provide them to states and jurisdictions for distribution. But in an exclusive interview with ABC's David Muir, President Biden says his administration could have been better prepared. You could argue that we should have known a year ago, six months ago, two months ago. The answer is, yeah, I wish I had thought about ordering a half a billion pills two months ago before COVID hit here. In the meantime, White House officials are urging Americans not to let their guards down, touting the vaccine and booster shots as the first line of defense. Dr. Fauci even advising against gathering with unvaccinated family and friends, telling MSNBC. But if there's an unvaccinated person, I would say I'm very sorry but not this time. In Wisconsin, nurse Sue Wolf tells ABC News nearly all of the patients she sees are unvaccinated. I get angry. I, I wonder why they did this, why they're doing this to me, why they're doing this to all the people that need to be away from sick people in the waiting room. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. We started the morning off with a lot of fog and drizzle. That's starting to go away. We're going to get some warm temperatures this afternoon. The latest update coming up.
And big news when it comes to bowl season, the Aggies are out of the Gator Bowl. We're going to explain why in just a bit. Welcome back. Kids across San Antonio staying physically and mentally active during the winter break thanks to the city's winter holiday camps. Yes, that's right. The San Antonio Parks and Recreation is hosting camps at 18 community centers across the city designed to be fun for kids while also helping develop their creativity and social skills. That's right. Tiffany Huertas has more on these camps and what activities are now available. It just provides a great opportunity for kids to be able to stay active and engaged during the holiday break while they're out of school. Smiles and laughter filled the Palm Heights Community Center this morning. These kids are enrolled in San Antonio Parks and Recreation's Winter Holiday Camp. Not only are these kids staying active, but they are making new friends. Yes. And some are getting to do their favorite activity. Arts and crafts. There are several activities for the kids at these camps from arts and crafts, sports, and fitness. With them being out of school and folks still needing to work, um, you know, it provides a great opportunity for them to still stay, you know, active and connected with other youth their ages um, and, you know, involved in a lot of really cool activities that we run here at our program. Sarah Goodell with the city's Parks and Recreation Department says kids and staff are staying safe by washing their hands after each activity and spaces are cleaned often. Masks are recommended but not required. Camps are open from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and cost $3 per day per child, and that includes lunch and a snack. It's a you know, pretty well-balanced, nutritious meal. Um, we partner with San Antonio Food Bank here, um, so it is a hot meal each day. Um, we have spaghetti meatballs to hamburgers to chicken nuggets. Sarah says space is still available for these camps. We feel really grateful to be able to provide this opportunity. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> All right, so the kids are inside, but taking a look outside, still mm. cloudy. Look at that. That is some gray sky right there. <laughs> Dustin, please tell me it's going to clear up eventually. Yes, yes positivity. We're going to see these clouds clear up. The blue skies will show up. The only problem with that, it's going to get warm. Uh, mm. We're going to deal with some more warm temperatures today. It gets even warmer as we head towards Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. The aquifer doesn't change today. It's a 664.3 in your pollen count. Well, this isn't so positive. A mountain cedar is in a very high category. It really jumped up today. 10,080 molds are low. We've got to look at that Christmas forecast coming up. Turning our attention to weather, and by the looks of it, it's not beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Justin Horn, you were talking about some of the hottest places around the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we got this information in a little bit earlier. It's preliminary, but it appears the warmest spot in the country yesterday was right here in South Texas. In fact, we had a tie between Del Rio and Catua as the hottest spot in the country on Wednesday. 84 degrees, and we may do it again today. We may do it again tomorrow and on Christmas Day too. We'll see where we uh, where we land, but uh, there's a lot of heat here around South Texas. As you know, the low this morning, Mount Washington, New Hampshire. That's uh, that's a pretty typical spot to get some cold weather up there. They set a lot of records with the uh, cold and gusty winds. It was negative 11 there this morning. So a 95 degree temperature difference between the high and the low across the country. And we're definitely at the warm side of things. That is for sure. Here's live cam outside. We've still got cloudy skies here in San Antonio. We started off with a lot of fog and drizzle. It was a dreary morning, but these uh, clouds are trying to break up. Once they do, we're going to see temperatures jump up pretty quickly. 63 at the airport, 66 Stinson, 65 Kelly, 61 at Randolph. And there's a look at the uh, satellite picture. You can see that area of clouds right along I-35, right along the escarpment. And uh, it is shrinking pretty quickly now, starting to see some peaks of blue even here around San Antonio. I give it another hour and we should be looking at partly cloudy skies and then eventually mostly sunny skies this afternoon. These clouds do have a big impact on the temperatures. Uh, they're keeping them down for right now. 63 again here in town, 65 in Austin. But where there is more sun, where there is drier air, temperatures are now in the 70s. Places like Junction, which started off chilly this morning, already up to 77. 71 Gonzalez, 74 in Kennedy, 75, one of the warmer spots down there in Catula. The 24-hour dew point change, we have seen an increase in moisture, so we're up about 5 degrees with regards to the dew point. You're going to start to feel it a little bit more, a little more humidity out there. 
and that's one of the reasons we saw some of the fog this morning. It's also why we'll see more fog probably tomorrow morning as well. More fog and some cloud cover too. This moisture is being pulled north out across East Texas. A little bit of a dry line setting up again today, but we're on the humid side of things, or at least more humid. And you can see where that uh, where those clouds sit up right where that moisture gradient is right where the, the thicker moisture tried to move in this morning. As we zoom out, the active weather across the country is not here in Texas, but out west. We've got a lot of rain, snow. This is where there could be some travel delays. If you're planning on doing some traveling, it's uh, there could be some problems. Certainly Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles. We've been talking about that. The active weather is going to stay out west. We've got a ridge in control of our weather, at least it's trying to move in a little bit more and everything's going up and over that ridge of high pressure and that keeps things very quiet where we are. It also keeps things warm. We're forecasting a high of 73 degrees today. Many places out in West Texas will get into the 80s. And then as we fast forward to tomorrow, even warmer, 80 here in San Antonio. A lot of places uh, across Texas will be in the 80s. Could be setting some records here for Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, also warm as you might imagine. Here's how it looks. When we're talking about climatology, the warmest Christmas we've ever seen here in San Antonio, 90. That was set back in 1955. I don't think we get there, but we could tie the second warmest Christmas on record. And if we, even if we get it to 80, we'll tie the third warmest Christmas. So regardless, it's going to be a warm Christmas. That's the bottom line. 78 tomorrow, 81 on Saturday, 81 Sunday, even 80s going into next week. We'll see some morning clouds and fog each and every day. Kind of stuck in a pattern for now, but one thing's for sure, this is going to go down as one of the warmer Decembers we've ever seen here in South Texas. So Justin, basically leave the Christmas sweaters in the closets this year. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can wear them if you want to, but you're going to you be, be Yeah, burning yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. All right, big news today. We're talking pro bowlers. We got Dallas Cowboys. We got a laundry list of players who got a big accolade just today. Plus, don't worry, we didn't forget about the Houston Texans. The big question is now surrounding their head coach, David Coley. Will he be back next season? They hope to answer that. We'll explain next. Welcome back. Big news for Aggies fans. The football team will not be competing in the bowl season. Specifically, not in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl that was set for New Year's Eve. They're set to take on Wake Forest. So head coach Jimbo Fisher announcing today that due to a combination of COVID issues within the A&M football program, as well as season ending injuries and transfers, the Aggie football roster is not in a position to safely participate in bowl season. This all comes after practice had to be shut down on Saturday and Zach Calzada entering the transfer portal. So he is out. So Aggie is not even sure who would have been left at quarterback. A lot of questions, but a statement from the Texas A&M Director of Athletics says, quote, it is heartbreaking for our players, coaches, and staff and fans that we are not able to play in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Postseason football is the pinnacle of the season, and when that opportunity is lost, it hurts on many levels. As we have learned in the last 21 months of this health challenge, the well-being and safety of our student athletes is paramount, end quote. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, from college to the pros, the Cowboys preparing for their second meeting with the Washington football team in just three weeks. And if they win, they could clinch the NFC East. And it all happens on Sunday night football. So there are new rules in place to protect players with this increase in positivity rate because of the Omicron variant. So the Cowboys, as a team, get this, deciding to cancel all of their Christmas visits with friends and family. They have gone to full virtual status at the team's headquarters with the playoffs on the line and still in the running for that number one seed in the NFC. And of course, the first round bye. It's making sure that Dallas is not taking any chances. They got to stay home this year, you know, we got to we got to make that sacrifice again. And, you know, that's that's where we came to it at the decision, you know, uh, as a as the NFL and also as, you know, a, a team as the Dallas Cowboys. So we got to just do whatever uh, it's going to take to make sure we give ourselves the best opportunity to win. A lot of uncertainty, but you know what is certain? We have Pro Bowlers on the Cowboys, so take a look. Tyron Smith, his eighth Pro Bowl, Zach Martin, the punter, and of course, two of the highlight players on the defense, Trayvon Diggs, who has been leading the league in interceptions, and Micah Parsons, the do-it-all defender from Penn State. Congratulations to those players. So there you go. 
All right, next up, we're heading to Houston. Big questions already being raised as to whether David Coley should return as head coach for the Texans next season. But for now, it's about getting through the rest of the season. And that starts this Sunday, taking on the L.A. Chargers. Biggest challenge for Houston, defense, especially the defensive line, where it appears Houston has been hit hardest with players in health and safety protocols. Some of those guys that have been playing, you know, we've been playing eight guys there for the most part all year. And they've been kind of split in time. Uh, we've, we're adding some guys uh, to that list uh, that have been on our practice squad that have been with us, uh, adding those guys up. But some of those guys that have been playing maybe 20 plays will be end up playing 30 plays now, Brandon. Instead of having split the time, they're probably going to play even more just because of the experience. Texans set to be a 10.5 point underdogs against the Chargers on Sunday in their noon kickoff. Coming up next, while mammograms have long been considered the gold standard in breast cancer detection, a new technology developed by an MIT professor and her student could soon change how women check their health. How it works in the next half hour. And a big recaller you need to know about affecting some bunk beds. So far, already a child's death has been connected to these beds. What you need to know after the break. And coming up today at five, box wine. At first glance, the thought of wine in a box might turn you away, but it's the taste that matters. Not to mention, you can get more bang for your buck. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz gives you some budget-friendly options that won't fall short of the taste. The story today at five after entertainment tonight. Several thousand bunk beds are part of a recall. The company says the beds could create hazards for children. That's right, hazards including serious entrapment and strangulation. At least one child's death has already been connected to these recalled beds. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says the recall affects about 39,000 Longwood Forest bunk beds. According to the agency, the metal hook fastening the ladder to the top of certain Longwood Forest bunk beds can move away or even detach from the bed frame, causing a gap between the ladder step and the frame. A two-year-old boy from Columbus, Ohio, died in May of 2018 after he was found unresponsive in a gap in the bunk bed ladder. Now pay attention, here are the models being recalled. Fremont Twin Over Twin Bunk Bed, Creston Twin Over Twin Bunk Bed, and Brandon Twin Over Full Bunk Bed. Now they were sold online at major retailers like Amazon, Walmart, and Wayfair. If you have one of these bunk beds, you can contact the company for a free repair kit, which includes reinforcement brackets for the ladder. And a second Royal Caribbean ship has a coronavirus outbreak on board. The ship actually denied entry into two island nations after 55 fully vaccinated crew members and passengers tested positive for COVID. And this comes only days after the ship had set sail from Fort Lauderdale. Odyssey of the Seas now has to remain at sea until its planned return December 26 to Florida. A few days ago, there was an outbreak on on board of Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas, at least 48 people testing positive when the ship docked in Miami. The explosive spread of the Omicron variant is causing many to wonder if they should cancel their holiday plans. But health experts say while nothing is 100% risk free, if you're vaccinated and take precautions, you can still gather with loved ones. CNN's Jen Sullivan has a closer look at the strategies to enjoy the festivities as safely as possible. With Omicron surging, coronavirus is once again trying to ruin the holiday spirit. But health experts say you can still enjoy the festivities, but only if you take precautions. I want people to gather, but I want people to gather safely. I'm going to gather with my family. We've limited the number of people that are there. Everybody's going to be uh, vaccinated. Health experts say getting vaccinated is still the best defense, and a booster shot increases that protection. The CDC has these recommendations for gathering during the holidays. Outdoors is safer than indoors. Avoid crowded, poorly ventilated spaces. If you are sick or have symptoms, don't host or attend a gathering and consider using a home self test before joining indoor gatherings. If you test in the afternoon before coming over and everyone is negative, yeah, then I think you, you, you can relax. 
If your guests include kids too young to be vaccinated, experts say they may be more at risk than ever before from getting infected because we don't know the effect of Omicron on young kids. I would take additional precautions because this is an infant that we're talking about with very little immune protection. And when it comes to attending large outdoor events, experts say you can go, but make sure you're vaccinated, boosted and wear a mask. Um, a mask, even though it's outdoors, if there are lots of people packed around you wearing a three ply surgical mask, don't wear a cloth mask. Cloth masks are little more than facial decorations. For today's Health Minute, I'm Jen Sullivan. And if you are leaving home for the holidays, make sure you secure your house inside and outside. Security experts say an empty home is an invitation to burglars. So put a stop delivery on your mail and your newspaper so that way the newspapers don't pile up. Arrange for someone to shovel the driveway if it snows. Not a problem here in San Antonio this month. Burglars have been known to use piled up snow as a cover story to be on your property, either breaking in or stealing things. Ask your neighbors to keep an eye out on your house and even let them park in your driveway and make sure to take your garage openers out of your vehicles. The number one way that they're breaking into houses these days is that if the car is in the driveway and it has a garage door opener in it, all they have to do is break a window and they can just access that garage opener. Some other quick tips, set up timers for your indoor lights so they come on and off at different times of the day. Install motion detector lights in the back of the house and in the driveway, and if possible, ask your local police department if an officer can drive by your home periodically. Now, the Omicron variant continues to spread. However, that's not stopping people from getting on a plane. TSA is expecting today to be one of the busiest days of the holiday season. Officials with the agency say just yesterday, more than 2 million people were screened at airports. That's more than they screened in 2019 before the pandemic. Despite the threat of the easily transmissible Omicron variant, TSA says that they are planning to screen 20 million people between today and January 3rd. The job market's recovery from last year's COVID recession continues to be strong as applications for unemployment benefits remain the same for two weeks. Workers filed 205,000 jobless claims the week before last. That translates into 1.9 million Americans that were collecting traditional unemployment benefits in the week ending on December 11th. The number of weekly applications for unemployment claims has fallen steadily most of the year, especially as employers are reluctant to let workers go right now when it's tough to find replacements. All right, well, back here at home, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 64 degrees and cloudy, Jaffney. Yes, very cloudy and humid, Justin. <laughs> very humid. <laughs> but hey, look, right, you see where light, it says live can there in the top right corner? Mm -hmm. See, there's a little sliver of blue sky. Mm. Okay. Frying to come through there. The tease. <laughs> well, I think within the next hour or so, you're going to see a, start to see a lot more of that. Okay. The skies will clear some, temperatures will warm up. It was actually a little chilly earlier this morning. We dropped down into the 40s briefly this morning, 48 degrees at the airport. But then moisture came in here. We got fog to develop, and temperatures have been ramping up ever since. Uh, slowly, but surely anyway. There's like some of the lows around the area. It did get down to 39 in Kerrville, but it is much, much warmer now. Take a look at the time lapse. So we're going to take you back to 3.45 a.m., we just had some cloudy skies, a little bit of haze out there, but watch how quickly the fog rolls in right there. Then we get a lot of uh, drizzle. You can see some of the, the droplets there on the camera. Now we're sitting at 63 degrees and we've got most, we'll call it mostly cloudy skies at the airport with some of that blue sky starting to shine through. South southwesterly winds at about nine miles per hour. Dew point is at 58. So yes, it is humid out there and we'll see that humidity level continue to uh, rise a little bit. Uh, there's a look at the cloud cover starting to shrink some. We are starting to see some breaks in the clouds here around Bear County. 63 at Randolph, 63 New Braunfels, 63 Canyon Lake. You're in the sun now in comfort. 68 degrees there and 65 in sunny skies at Lost Maples. We'll look for mostly sunny skies later this afternoon. 73 our high temperature. We did drop that just a little bit because clouds this morning have really kind of kept temperatures from rising as quick as they could. But we're going to see this repeat again tomorrow. And uh, we'll see the afternoon highs get a little bit warmer as we work towards Christmas. Another look at that seven day forecast is coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. These days, televisions at almost any price point come equipped with great resolution and smart features to create a visual feast. But what about an actual feast? How one professor is hoping to create a more immersive experience. We're talking about a TV you can lick. Not sure how I feel about that, but we'll take a look after the break. 
Welcome back. Researchers revealing a new diagnostic tool in the battle against breast cancer. That's right. It's called Mirai, artificial intelligence that can see beyond what the human eye can detect on mammograms and determine if a patient is at risk up to five years earlier. Now, the technology is still in development and undergoing medical trials. Regina Barzilai is even using her own mammograms to test the accuracy of the technology. She hopes the tool will not only change the rate of detection, but also potentially change the course of treatment early on, possibly saving millions of lives. If this technology is used in the uniform way, first of all, uh, we can identify early who are high risk patient and intervene. The, the earlier the cancer is detected, uh, the easier it is to treat it and the outcomes are much better. Doctors say the traditional diagnostic tests are still needed and this technology is still in the early trials, but the early indicators are hopeful. Now check this out. Take a look at this, a new type of TV can change the way you binge watch, uh, binge watch cooking competitions. Yeah, it's almost like binge eating. That's because a professor in Japan developed a TV to be lickable. Mm. Yeah, you literally lick the TV. The professor says the TV would come equipped with a carousel of about 10 flavor canisters that spray in combination to create the taste of a particular food. Now he says the flavors of all types of food can broken down or can be broken down to 10 basic tastes, salty, sour, sweet, bitter, spicy, and savory. The machine is programmed with recipes that allows it to create the taste of 20 types of food samples. This professor works with a team of about 30 students that have produced a variety of flavor related devices, including a fork that makes food taste richer. Now he said that he built the TV prototype himself over the past year and that a commercial version would cost about, get this, $875 to make. All right, so Justin Horn, I saw your <laughs> faces to say it kindly during the story. What are your thoughts? It's a hard mm. pass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think that, uh, I don't think that's even a question. I think most of the people watching right now agree with us. It's one thing, I mean, if they made it like smellable, like mm. the smell, okay. maybe that will work, but eating mm -mm. or mm. tasting. Don't need to lick nope. the TV. Mm -mm. No, nope. especially in this day and age. Leave that to the dogs. <laughs> uh, 63 so far today. 48 was the low this morning. That actually was above average. We're getting close to the average high. We're going to get well above this this afternoon. The record high is 83. That's not in jeopardy. I don't think we get there. That was set back in 1972. And look at the record low, six, set back in 1989. That certainly is not in jeopardy as we see our temperatures get close to record levels next couple days. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. All right, welcome back. 1245 this afternoon, 64 degrees. We know Christmas right around the corner, but it right. does not feel like a winter wonderland out right. there. Santa Claus is going to, he's going to have to have like some type of shorts, like a, what'd you call those Hawaiian shirt? Oh yeah. <laughs> Get you some Gatorade too. Stay hydrated for sure. Yes. Uh, this has been, it's been kind of a weird December, right? And my, uh, my curiosity there is I wonder what that's doing to the mountain cedar. Mm. It, it feels like the season has been a little early this year. I don't know how the weather's playing a role in that, uh, but it seems like it may be uh, the latest count today is 10,080 and that puts us into the very high category. So it feels like we're a little ahead of the curve here when it comes to mountain cedar season. And if you're sniffling and sneezing today, this could be the culprit. Uh, we'll see where we go tomorrow, but the, the last week or so it hasn't been all that great for Mount Cedar and we haven't really even had northerly winds. So you can imagine if we get a front through here with some gusty northerly winds, what that may do. Uh, that is not in the forecast, by the way. Uh, things are staying warm well into next week. Right now we've got mostly cloudy skies and 63 degrees. South southwesterly winds at about nine miles per hour. Dew point is at 58. That number has been pretty high thanks to southerly winds ushering in that Gulf moisture. 68 Comfort, 64 in Bandera, 63 Canyon Lake, 63 right now in New Braunfels. Seeing some 70s on the map, especially in places where the sun is now out. Katua at 75. Again, one of the warmest places in the country yesterday. 69 Fredericksburg, 677 as you get up into junction and there you see the dew points. When you start getting into the 60s, that's when it starts to get a little muggy out there and we'll be right on the cusp today here in San Antonio. I, I think you'll feel it some And the dew points. Well, they stay up there into next week. We don't see uh, these numbers come down much even into Wednesday of next week. We get a couple of fronts to try to get close, but none of them move through. And so the humidity stays with us. As we look at the uh, satellite picture here, you can see that cloud deck 
that uh, developed this morning. We had fog and then we have the clouds. Those are quickly going away though. This area is quickly shrinking and I think we'll be in the sun here next couple of hours, which will help those temperatures to get up into the 70s this afternoon. And uh, the active weather, all of the active weather is really the western half of the country with a lot of rain and snow across the west coast. And uh, looking at the water vapor, you get a better idea of kind of how the, the pattern is uh, developing right now. We've got a good conveyor belt of moisture coming in around California, and that's helping to produce all of that rain. And for us, we've got a ridge of high pressure. Everything's kind of moving up and over and staying away from Texas and keeping things very quiet and dry here. So with that in mind, here are the high temperatures next seven days. Our, our average high, by the way, is somewhere around 63, 64. We are well above average each and every day. Uh, and I tried to get temperatures below 80. I really did next week, but it's, it's just difficult. The models are still trending warm here, and that goes for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So I know it's not going to feel a whole lot like Christmas, but that's just the situation we're in. Temperatures today up around 73. I did lower those just a little bit, just based on the fact that these clouds are hanging on uh, a little bit longer. But uh, again, they'll be gone soon. And then tonight, we'll dip into the 60s, 65 by 8 p.m. 62 10 p.m. and then we'll start to get some fog redeveloping overnight. I think we could see some areas where it gets thick again tomorrow morning and this sort of pattern continues into next week also. So some morning clouds, morning fog each and every day. Uh, Christmas Day 81 degrees morning low 60. It's been a while since I remember seeing temperatures like that. We've had some years where, where Christmas has been warm obviously but it feels like it's been a while since it's uh, been this warm guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, it's the holiday season, and that means Christmas is all around us. However, it's not the only holiday folks are celebrating. Details coming up. First off, I don't even like candy corn to begin with. I thought candy corn was just for the one holiday. <laughs> There's some kind of meat. Like the initial taste is not good. Is it turkey? Why is that in a candy? If my turkey tasted like that, my family would not have eaten it. Oh. Um, here's the thing. That tastes... <laughs> Casserole? Which is probably delicious but not in candy cane or candy corn form. It's not sweet, it's not tart, it's just kind of gross. Oh, oh, ugh. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Okay, this is pretty good. Like a cotton candy or something like that. Like pumpkin pie or something? Tastes like sunscreen, but it's not that. Oh, it's caramel or pecan. It's pecan pie. Pecan, caramel. Coffee? I hate coffee. This is definitely like coffee flavors. That is awful. Um, a candle. I can't with these, they're so gross. So I like stuffing and I like pumpkin pie, but I do not like the candy corn flavors of both of those things. Whoever's coming up with these, you missed the mark. That was really bad. <laughs> Why would you put me through that pain anyways? My present to you is taste testing these so you never have to try them. Don't, don't buy this. <laughs> That's so awesome. Justin, you were getting it, man. Justin, uh, down. She thumbs down. I think your face said it all. I'll be so. sure to get you a family pack for home. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, Christmas isn't the only holiday people are gearing up for. Today is Festivus. That's right. So it is a holiday celebration made popular by an episode of Seinfeld. It comes around each December 23rd. The holiday's tagline, a Festivus for the rest of us. So instead of a Christmas tree, there you go. There is an unadorned aluminum Festivus pole. Festivus starts with a dinner followed by an airing of grievances in which family and friends tell each other how disappointed they are in each other during the year. 
Yeah, then there's the feats of strength. Get mm. this, namely wrestling. Now, Festivus is not over until the head of the household is pinned. I'd say good luck with that in my household. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, Festivus was created by Reader's Digest editor and author Daniel O'Keefe. He first celebrated it in 1966, but here we go. This is how it became mainstream. His son was a writer for Seinfeld, wrote the episode that featured Festivus. It's pretty interesting. Right? It is interesting. <laughs> All right, so going back to the holidays and going back to Christmas, holiday sugar and spice and everything so nice, they decided to air it twice, look at That's that. Right, it's the SA Live's classic Christmas special and it's just coming up in just a few minutes. Here's a sneak peek from Mike and Fiona. It is an extra special essay live today and because it's one week from Christmas Eve. Yes, it's the essay live classic Christmas special and today on the show we are getting San Antonio into the Christmas spirit. Nothing like Christmas and a bunch of lights and where better to go than zoo lights. Oh, you don't want to miss this roaring good time at the zoo. <laughs> I see what you did there. And we visit Enchanted Springs Ranch for Christmas lights and events Old West style. Very, very cool place. And we are going to climb aboard the Polar Express for a chance to see Santa at the Texas Transportation Museum. Plus, we enjoy a Christmas dinner recipe from Eat Fredericksburg, Texas. And this is going to be delicious. Plus, we gobble up some cookies from Sabadi. And we go caroling along the Riverwalk, bringing Christmas cheer in Dickens costumes. <laughs> I love how when we did this, we had to tell folks, "Don't, we're not professional <laughs> singers, because I think they were expecting a little more <laughs> from us. <laughs> and, and folks are really good sports, too, and bear with us. So, And of course, James Avery shows us un unforgettable gifts that you can give your loved ones. All that and a whole lot more on SA Live's classic Christmas special.